somebody actually asked me this question online, which I felt was, you know, a little bit of an unusual question, but I thought I'd get around to answering it in this video because it wasn't actually one person. It's been a couple of people that have asked me this. So I guess people want to know, what is the function and advantage of using a wide stance in boxing? Well, first of all, people have to understand that there is no one size fits all boxing style for everybody. Some things that some fighters do work for them and they don't work for other fighters. Some things that some trainers teach work for some fighters and not for others, etc., etc. So bear that in mind before you listen to what I'm about to say. Now, some people have arms which are very long in proportion to their height. If you go online and even if you measure your own reach, I'll put a graphic on screen right now, a picture, so you can understand how the reach measurement is measured in boxing. Generally speaking, for the majority of people, your reach will be roughly equivalent to your height. Yeah, if you measure your reach in inches or centimeters, whatever, and then you measure your height, they'll be almost identical. Give or take, you know, a centimeter or an inch here or there. But then you get some people who have a reach which is disproportionately short compared to their height. And you get other people who have a reach that is disproportionately long compared to their height. Adonis Stevenson is a good example of somebody who has a disproportionately long reach for his height. He's only 5'10", 5'11", which is about, I think, 72 inches. But his reach is 77. So his arms are disproportionately long for somebody that tall. Now, I'm somebody as well that has a has pretty long arms for my height. My Reach is definitely not equivalent to my height. <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot longer. And because of that, when I was boxing, I would often, in certain situations, against certain opponents, adopt a pretty wide stance. And the reason for that is simply balance. If you've got some big arms, especially some big, long, heavy arms, and you're trying to extend them out in front of you, to throw extended punches like straight right hands and what have you with force. If your feet are too close together, you're going to fall off balance when you throw your arms out there because they're so long. So in order to maintain balance, you have to spread your stance a little wider to compensate from those, for those big long arms stretching out there and delivering the power shot. And this is what you tend to find is fighters that have these very long arms in comparison to their height are more often than not the guys who will adopt a wide stance. Deontay Wilder is an example. He's got long arms in proportion to his height. He adopts a wide stance. Tommy Hearns was a guy. Long arms, wide stance. Lennox Lewis, in certain fights, adopted a wide stance. You look at the early rounds against Mike Tyson, particularly the first round, his stance is very wide. Floyd Mayweather is a perfect example, actually, of somebody who has very long arms for his height. And with Floyd, it's not so much the reach, but actually the arm length, which is a different measurement than reach and a more accurate and relevant measurement than reach. And Floyd Mayweather, more often than not, adopts a very wide stance when he's fighting. And that is partly to do with balance, yeah? When you extend your shots, you want to maintain balance. For somebody who has, let's say, short arms in proportion to their height, they don't need to have such a wide stance because the weight being displaced in front of them when they throw their arms out is not as far away from their center of gravity, yeah? It's not, far, it's not so far away from their core core mass so it's not gonna you know displace the weight so much so they don't need such a wide stance if their arms are not particularly long in comparison to their height yeah but uh 
that's just one of the reasons why you might want to adopt a wide stance or why certain people do. Another one of the reasons is to maintain, to help maintain distance between your head and your opponent's gloves. If you're standing straight up, which means your feet are fairly close together, when your opponent's feet get close to you, his fist is not far away from you. Yeah? Whereas if you've got a wide stance and your, your uh, front foot is a couple of feet out in front of you, that means that your foot is going to be able to, you know, it will be within your opponent's range before your head. So your feet and your front arm, this is how it used to be for me when I used to, you know, adopt a wide stance in certain situations. My foot and my front arm, my left arm would be kind of like my antenna. That would, be, that would be like what I would use to gauge the range of where my opponent is at. Yeah, and I found it much more effective when I had a wide stance to be able to do that, to have the front foot out there and my head is further away and my arms. A lot of people as well who use a wide stance, they kind of put the left hand out there. Yeah, not completely straight, but semi-straight. And again, this is all to do with range, being able to judge the distance more effectively. When you've got the wide stance and you've got the, the, the arm out there, you feel like it's an antenna. You know where your, your opponent is at. I'm keeping him long. I'm keeping him long. And when you want to strike, you can strike. So it's partly to do with balance. It's partly to do with distance. And for some people, it's just instinctive. It's not something they really think about. It's something they just feel. They feel like, okay, this stance feels good to me. This works well for me. And f to be honest, that's how it was for me. I would watch other fighters doing it when I was a teenager and that you know, when I first started boxing, I would see fighters I liked doing it and I would experiment with different styles because there were so many fighters I liked. I would experiment with different styles and the style that felt most comfortable to me was that style where your, your, your stance is slightly wide and you're kind of pouring your left hand out a little bit, you know, but again, it depends on the opponent I was up against. If I was up against somebody who was a lot taller than me, then I wouldn't fight like that, <laughs> you know, because that's kind of like a boxing, counter-punching type stance. If I was fighting somebody a lot taller than me, more often than not, I'd put my hands up and go steaming in, more like Mike Tyson, Joe Frazier style. So it all depends on the situation and it depends on the opponent. Again, I've seen some people ridicule individuals for having a wide boxing stance and say, oh, well, his stance is too wide. Well, in certain situations, your stance might be too wide, but there are other situations where having a wide stance for certain fighters is actually an advantage and it actually helps them. It's obviously helped Floyd Mayweather, hasn't it? Because he's adopted that stance in most of his fights. And uh, as I was going to say, it, it depends on the style of the opponent that you're up against. Sometimes it isn't the right thing to be doing. An example of that might be David Hay when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. David Hay typically has a wide stance in most of his fights. And again, just what I described to you in terms of keeping your head out of harm's way by keeping that front leg out there and that left hand kind of pouring out there, it helps maintain the range. It helps make sure that when you throw your shots, you're going to be throwing extended shots. Yeah? Because if, if your front foot is there out in front of you with a wide stance and you're not extending your punches, you're going to be hitting thin air. <laughs> at the end of the day yeah so you have to extend your punches when you're when you're uh in a wide stance like that more often than not anyway and yeah david hay adopts that wide stance it works for him particularly when he's fighting somebody of his own type of height but when he was fighting somebody as tall as a vladimir klitschko somebody who who uh, incidentally doesn't use a particularly wide stance and again that's because vladimir doesn't have particularly long arms in proportion to his height. Vladimir is 6'6", his reach is only 6'1". Uh, sorry, his reach is only 81. Yeah? Six foot six inches tall, reach is only 81, cent, uh, 81 inches, sorry. Whereas you, you look at Len Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis was shorter than Vladimir Klitschko. Lewis was about 6'5", Vladimir is about 6'6", six, 6'6", six, six, six and a half, somewhere around there. And Lewis's reach was like 84 or 85 inches. So a much longer reach than Vladimir, despite the fact he's shorter. And so you would see Lewis 
in you know numerous fights adopting a wide stance in certain situations not all the time sometimes Lewis would bring his feet together but if you look at for example the Andrew Golotta fight you'll see a wide stance the early rounds against Mike Tyson a wide stance etc uh, in other fights his stance wasn't that wide like against David Tua uh, he knew that Tua was a slow footed guy so he wanted to stand up as tall as possible that's another thing with having a wide stance is it brings your height down yeah you, you, you your feet are further apart that means your head has to come down, yeah? So, yeah, uh, David Hager's against Vladimir Klitschko. He had this wide stance, but with a wide stance, you can't really make dramatic foot movements, particularly against a taller opponent, as easily as you can if, if your feet are a little closer together. Mike Tyson was a guy who I studied, you know, uh, like a scholar back in the days. When I was a teenager, I studied Mike Tyson. And Tyson was a guy who, if you watch his footwork, his feet would be fairly close together most of the time. And Tyson's a typical example of somebody who doesn't have long arms in proportion to his height. And his feet were fairly close together most of the time until he was ready to strike. And if you don't believe what I'm saying, go watch Mike Tyson film. Go watch the slow motion. When he was ready to strike, all of a sudden, he would lunge with his front foot. He would take a couple little baby steps. And in the final step, he would lunge with his front foot. And at that moment, his feet would be very wide apart. So you can see some photos, particularly of Tyson, with an extremely wide stance. But that stance was normally at the moment that he's striking. He'd take a couple baby steps to get in position. Then he'd take a huge lunge and then he'd throw his shot. Yeah. Yeah. And using that type of technique of footwork, yeah, he would he would save the wide stance up until the last moment to cover a large distance to be able to, you know, hone in on the opponent very quickly. And that's the advantage of having your feet fairly close together. You can lunge, yeah, when your feet are only a certain distance apart, which is not that far, you can then if you decide to adopt a wide stance quickly, put, you know, shove that front foot out there very fast. And all of a sudden you've covered about two, three feet. Whereas if your feet are already far apart, you can't extend them no more or else you're going to be doing the splits <laughs> and your head's going to be so low. You're not even going to be able to reach your opponent's chin. Yeah. So Tyson used to, as I say, adopt a fairly narrow foot stance until he was ready to strike. Then he'd lunge with that front foot. He'd be in a wide stance for a second and he'd be able to land his shot and do his thing. Uh, but David Hay, with that wide foot stance, when Vladimir Klitschko was taking a step back, he'd read David Hay. When David Hay was going to throw the right hand, he'd read it. He'd take a little half step back and David Hay would lunge and fall short with his shots. Okay. David Hay using that wide stance is much more effective when he's fighting either a stationary opponent or when he's facing a, an opponent who is around the same type of height as himself. Against Klitschko, he really needed, needed to know how to use a narrower stance where his feet are not so far apart, more like a Holyfield. Holyfield was a guy who didn't really use a wide stance. Yeah, he was a guy whose feet were not ridiculously close together, but, you know, reasonably you know, Holyfield's feet were a reasonable distance apart, not particularly wide or not particularly narrow. And because of Holyfield's stance, he was able to take those little baby steps here and there, maintain his balance at all times and get close to big guys. Yeah, jab his way in. One thing David Hay wasn't doing against Klitschko was jabbing his way in. He, he exchanged jabs with Klitschko a couple of times in the fight, but... He wasn't doubling up and tripling up with the jab and bouncing around and moving around from left to right and trying to befuddle Vladimir with movement. He wasn't doing that. David Hayes' movements were very predictable against Vladimir Klitschko. That's, that's definitely a situation where David Hay would have benefited from knowing how to use his feet in a different way. Knowing how to use, you know, yeah, knowing how to use a different stance, basically. He would have benefited there. So, again... Adopting a wide stance can work in certain situations, not in others. It's going to work for some fighters and not for others. It all depends on what works for you. There's no, oh, wide stance is terrible. Oh, no, wide stance is great. Or shoulder roll is great. Oh, no, shoulder roll is terrible. It's not like that. 
<laughs> it's what it's like kung fu, man. Every kung fu style can't work for every kung fu master. Certain kung fu masters are adept at certain styles rather than others. Yeah. All comes down a lot of it comes down to personal preference and, and what your build requires. You might be somebody who doesn't have disproportionately long arms in comparison to your height. Then again, you might be someone that has very long arms in comparison to your height, but you're not adopting a wide stance and therefore you're not getting full extension on your shots. And for example, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're somebody that's got those long arms in comparison to your height and your stance is not wide enough, you, you may be somebody that don't even extend your punches. You'll probably be throwing bent arm punches because when you extend your arms, you realize that you're falling off balance. So to compensate for that, you start throwing short arm punches and therefore you're negating your own reach. You're not learning how to, to take advantage of your own reach. And in fact, a good example of somebody like that is Bryant Jennings. Bryant Jennings is like 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, He's got an 84 inch reach, so very long reach in comparison to his height. But you don't see him getting full extension on his right hand. Yeah? He's not adopting the correct stance. He hasn't been ta taught how to properly position his body in order to get extension on those long arms of his without falling off balance. And part of that is adopting a wide stance, like a David Hay. That's how you get the extension on those long arms without falling off balance, particularly with the straight shots. Yeah? So somebody needs to show Brad Jennings that and then he'd be able to utilize that, those long arms of his. Because right now he's throwing bent arm punches. Not, not knowing the correct foot base that you need to be able to take full advantage of that reach. So I think I covered everything here. Uh, also power. Some people have said, surely you can't get power when your stance is that wide. I even heard Colonel Bob Sheridan talk about it and some other people say, oh, you know, having a wide stance means you can't get power. Absolute rubbish. Again, it depends on the fighter. Some fighters may have a wide stance and they find they can't get power. Other fighters will find that actually with a wide stance, they can get tremendous power. Tommy Hearns would fight out of a wide stance and he found he could punch incredibly hard. When I was fighting, I found that using a wide stance a lot of the time in certain situations, particularly again, against, against somebody of my type of height, I could get wicked power on my straight right hand using a, a wide stance. Yeah, Deontay Wilder uses a wide stance and we've all seen what his right hand does to people. So it all comes down to the individual and the mechanics of your body may not be the same as the mechanics of the next guy's body. It's like I had a debate with somebody about left hooks one time when I was saying that a lot of people find that they can generate more power throwing hooks, not just left hooks, but hooks in general, if they're standing slightly square on. Mike Tyson and Joel Frazier are two good examples of guys who would stand quite square on when they were throwing their hooks. And a lot of people find that when they're square on like that, they find it easier to rotate the hips and generate power when they're square on. But then this other person said, it's not true at all. You're, you're better off being side on when you throw a hook. You get more power that way. Again, it's a, it's a silly debate, <laughs> you know, because it all depends on the individual. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Mike Tyson, as square on as he was, was doing it wrong, he could punch tremendously hard. <laughs> yeah, and he could switch between left hooks and right hooks, you know, left uppercuts and right uppercuts in the blink of an eye, seamlessly. So there's advantages to, for example, fighting square on in some situations for some fighters. They find they can get more power and seamlessly switch between left and right hook power shots and uppercuts and whatnot. It works very well for them. So yeah, it's a very long-winded video. I always apologize for these long-winded videos, but some of you really like them. So shout out to the people who watch this through to the end. And I hope you got something from it. If this is a question that some of you were also wondering about, something that you were thinking about, I hope I managed to answer it for you. So drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about everything I talked about in this video. Um, yeah. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.